Hello everybody, this is David Budlizer from Budlizer.com with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about SWOT tests in game design. If you're from a business background or have been to some business lectures and classes, you probably already know what a SWOT test is. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about how to use them in game design. They're especially useful when you're thinking of different mechanics or, or very important things for your game and you want to make an outline of what some of the effects of those choices will be before you make them. So again, this is with budlizer.com and you can check out my website for free game assets, tutorials, and promo codes. All right. So first off, if you want to make a SWOT test, just take a piece of paper or make a couple tables in Google Docs and just list SWOT. I'm going to assume that you might be a little bit new at this, so SWOT stands for Strength, Weakness, Opportunity, and Threat. And this should be pretty clear that this is simply a list of the pros and cons. But what makes the difference between a, you know, an opportunity and a strength? They're both pros, aren't they? Well, the difference it can be, sometimes be confusing, but it is important to, to recognize. A strength usually means internal. An opportunity is something external. So as you make this list, you want to make sure either your rows or your columns are dividing your internal and external factors. Personally, I prefer this method. I like to have my pros on the left and have my cons on the right. So I guess you call that the column method. Yeah. For an example today, we're going to be discussing making your game free to play. Now that kind of ties in nicely with SWAT because it's both a business decision but it also is going to determine all the mechanics that go into your game and how you psychologically influence the player with things like frustration, timing, fun, enjoyment, leveling up and progress. When we're doing a SWAT test sometimes it helps to know what are we comparing this to? You know we know what the strengths for free to play are but to define its weaknesses, we might want to give it at least a little bit of context. So we're going to compare this to a free demo with unlockable content, where you, you know, you, you get the game for free, uh, but it's not free to play, it's just a demo. At some point, you have to pay to continue any farther, and so you pay to unlock it. On the Apple Store, this would be the light version versus the full version. All right. So as you can see, I simply made a list of my strengths and opportunities, and all of my cons in the left, I'm sorry, all of my pros in the left column, and all of my cons in the right column. But let's go through these and, and talk about why they're internal versus external. So over here, free to play in the strength column, we have long-term revenue. I put this as internal because this will help us, this is you know, very beneficial for us and helps us make more games. You could list this as external. It's kind of one of those things that could be internal or external, and that happens with SWAT. If you get stuck, just put it somewhere and move on. Don't think about it too long. It's kind of a waste of time. All right. This another strength is it updates and revitalizes your players and your earnings. Uh, um, the other nice strength about going with the free-to-play game is it gives you an incentive to make procedural content. Now, what you're going to notice that I put procedural content both in the strength for its replayability, but also as a weakness. And it, we put it as a weakness because it might be harder to balance than non-procedural content. With a level system, you simply, no, well, the goal, of course, is to gradually increase in difficulty as the game goes on. And you can have several easy levels and then a hard level or several easy guys and then a really hard bad guy, but it's generally, you know, it curves up nice and easy. With procedural content, getting that right type of balance can be harder. All right. So our other weakness is that designing mechanics for free-to-play can be a lot trickier. It also limits some of the mechanics that we put into our game or limits the way we implement them because we want to make money off of some of the mechanics that are in our game. So we tend to lose out on some of that, I guess, old-school wholesomeness that comes from non-free-to-play games. Now, we do have opportunities, though, for free-to-play. The opportunity here is because our game is free, we can really expect a lot more people to download the game. Uh, and we don't really care if they pirate it, or it's not as big as a concern anyway. We just simply want as many people to download it as possible, and that's an opportunity with free-to-play. Um, it also helps, even if we don't make a lot of money from that 
audience per se. Free to play tends to have a, a large curve. Uh, what I mean by that is maybe 10% of the people who download your game ever spend any money at all and the whales typically are in the 0 0.5 maybe 1% your core gamers are your, you know the people who spend regularly are about 1 to 3% of your entire audience so another opportunity those that were building an audience for future releases the other 90% that might never might never spend any money on your game at all that's still an opportunity those are people who know about you they know about your company They've played your games before, and that gives you a lot of credibility in the market later. But there's a couple threats that we want to be concerned with with free-to-play. Number one is you can become known as those free-to-play guys. It's not always a, you know, there's a big difference between making free-to-play games and making uh, downloadable, wholesome games, if you might want to call them, I don't know. Uh, and so that gives you a little bit of branding. You might want to be concerned about that. Another threat is that you're designing mechanics that can frustrate players. I could go into this more, but the, the purpose of this tutorial was just to teach you how to do SWAT. Uh, very easy and simple to set up in Google Docs. I'll do that real quick. Just to remind you, you can find out, you can watch more of my tutorials, find game developer assets, and my musings on my website, budlizer.com. So just as a quick tutorial here, setting up our SWAT, come and insert table. Go ahead and do a 2 by 3 put the object that you're going to be discussing, maybe what you're comparing it to. I'm going to do control alt 2 to get our heading 2 up. Do strength. Enter. Control shift 8. And we can start our list. All right. Then simply right arrow over to the next column and continue. Final piece of advice is go ahead and leave this out of your GDD. If anybody wants to know why you made a certain decision between two different mechanics, you can bring out your SWAT tests and show them. But putting them in the GDD is really just, it, it's, it bogs it down, it's too bothersome, it's too distracting. Don't put this in your GDD.